Hello, it's Liam O'Neill, the private guy. Hi, I'm Manichek, known as the man that fooled the scientist. So Manichek, what do you think is the most important thing for people getting into magic or people performing magic? I think the most important thing is find your character to figure out who it is that you are, who you're going to be. Uh, anybody can do a magic trick, but not yeah. anybody can be a personality. And if you're going to be an entertainer, you have to be a personality. You have to know who and what you are. If you're going to be that guy that's going to consistently buy the next magic trick and keep doing that, you're never going to be good. You're going to put that stuff in the drawer yeah, constantly, the drawer. Yeah. and then you're going to do the next thing. And then when a big superstar comes out and they do a, a coin that gets bitten in it, they go, you're going to go, oh, wait, I got one of those. Let me go get it. Well, yeah. if you weren't good enough to think of something in that time, you're not good enough to be doing that now. So you need to figure out who and what your character is. Take a look at evangelists. If you're going to be a mentalist like myself, I say take a look at evangelists on yeah. TV. They're the greatest performers. They go the highs, the lows. They get people crying. They get people falling over just by saying it. So you're going to fall and they fall. You know, yeah. you can feel the, the hand of God. And people feel it and they fall over. And it's yeah. all suggestion. That's all that it is. Yeah. I've exposed a lot of different evangelists. But watch the evangelists because you'll learn how to entertain and their the stage presence and everything is just yep. amazing. Absolutely. Whatever you're saying, so you're thinking about tricks. So in general, for someone that's just starting out, if they're doing tricks, that they shouldn't just buy a book, read the trick, and do it how you'd say it in the book. They should take time to. No, now if you huh? if you're beginning in the very early stages, maybe you want to take the trick the way it is. But it doesn't take that much to start thinking of a different story than what comes yeah. with the trick itself. And I think you should start doing that almost immediately when you're starting out, so it becomes the norm for you. It becomes the norm to open up the package, learn the method of the trick, and put your own story together. Like you know, the other day I was at the store, and I, you know, just be personal. Comedians do that all the time. They yeah. take topical things, but they make it seem as if it's something that actually happened to them. Yeah. Hey, I was with my bloke the other day, and he blah 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 blah. They yeah. don't just use the joke the way that it is. Yeah. Hey, you know, there was this guy walking down the street. Blah, you know, yeah. they, they'll actually put themselves into that. That story. Or always, I was sitting at the bar the other day, get day, and this, you know, this this priest, this Jewish guy, and this black guy yeah. walked in, and I was sitting there, and I was listening. You know, they put themselves into the story. Yeah, it makes it more personal. Right. Uh, one of the things that I like to let people know is you can. My whole thing is that you can be whatever you want to be. And I came from a background where I wasn't very good at school, and I left right. with no. Can you just give us a wee bit of background on yourself? Yeah. Well, I was born in England. Left when I was nine. Went to South Africa for seven years. Australia, uh, then the United States, and the reason I was there because I was abandoned in South Africa, two brothers a year and three years old. Pretty much raised them by myself till I was 15. They might say they raised themselves, but hey, they were a year and three years old and I was nine, so I was the oldest. Yeah. So I think I raised them. So <laughs> yeah. we kind of all raised ourselves. Um, and I left there to go be with my real father, who actually happened to live in Australia at the time, moved to Pennsylvania in the United States. Things didn't quite work out there. So I had three jobs when I was in high school, just so I could finish high school. You know, one yeah. of them was a cook, one of them was working security, which is where I got my sleep, and the other one was working in a fast food restaurant called Long John Silver's. The security, I was allowed to get sleep there because it was this thing of like, you sit in a little room, you sleep for 45 minutes, you get up, then you gotta go to all the locations yeah. and plug it in, look, 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 okay, it's okay. Let's go back to the little room and sleep again. So that's where I, where I got my sleep. So I was doing those things, and um, I picked up a book by James the Amazing Randy that talked about Uri Geller, yeah. and that book said that Ed Geller was using tricks, so I started creating my own tricks. I was like, wow, this is fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so much so that all the kids were stealing the silverware and bringing it to me in school, and then we went to plastic silverware, so I graduated, made the bell go up early, got suspended for that, you know, yeah. but, but I figured out ways to entertain, and up until that point, I never had a home because I had moved all the time, yeah. and again, I was socially inept. And uh, all of a sudden, I had a home. That home was the stage. No matter where the stage was, that was my home. And I never told myself that I couldn't do these things. I told myself I couldn't do these things. In yeah. fact, so much so at that point that I wrote the amazing Randy a letter and said, if you ever need a kid to full scientist, I'd be happy to do it. Maybe it was a little cocky. Maybe I got ahead of myself, but the opportunity came about. Yeah. I went in for four years. I convinced scientists I was genuine. Every single time they said to me, can you do this? Yeah. I always said yes. I never said no. The only time I get to where I say no now is because now I have a reputation. I can't fail. Yeah. But back then, failing was an option. Because yeah. and, and the great thing from failure is you learn. Yes. You learn yeah. more about failure than you do successes. I like going to see shows, all kinds of shows, but I also enjoy seeing shows that are bad. And the yeah. reason being, I walk out of there and I go, you know what? 
I would never do this, but I wouldn't have thought that I would never do that until I actually okay, see somebody yeah, else yeah. do it and I learn from that. Yeah. So we can all learn from other people's mistakes and we can learn from our own mistakes as well. But um, you know, just believe that you can actually do something. If you have a passion for it, I think you have to have a passion for it. Once you have a passion for something, you can do anything. If you've got yeah. that passion, you can do anything. If you want to be successful business, and this is the thing, you have to realize what is it you want to do. Do you want to be able to just sing, but just sing as an amateur and go do karaoke? Well, yeah. great, you know. Oh, well, I can't sing because I'm off key. So you know what? Go take some lessons. Yeah. You know, go get somebody that can actually put you in key and learn it. Yeah. Don't tell them what you're doing it. Just do it and show up at karaoke and sing like a canary. Yeah. You know. So you you can actually do anything. My girlfriend at this particular time is an aerialist, silks, cool. and she saw somebody do it one day. She says, "I'm going to do it." So she took lessons, she started learning, and now she does it professionally. Right. And she has multiple other things as well. She decided she wanted to be a singer. So she took money that she had, and she decided, you know what, I'm gonna put an album together. And she put an album together, had it up on iTunes, did well, knew that she wouldn't necessarily be the best singer in the world, so took lessons. And from there, she's able to go out and do clubs and sing all over yeah. the world. You know, she's, she decided, hey, why should other people go to Harvard? I know I don't have any money, I can't afford, so you know what, I'll sell my car. So she yeah. sold her car so she could do a semester at Harvard. So she's the kind of person that doesn't say no, yeah. and I'm the kind of person that doesn't say no. You're the kind of person yeah. that doesn't say no. You say, no, I can do it. And if I can't do it this way, I'll figure a way out how yeah. I can actually do that. So if you can't figure it out for yourself, you can meet people like yourself. Exactly. And you have the experience that you can pass on. Right. Meet the professionals, talk to them, get to know them and you'll learn how to do it. You may not be the best at what you do, but don't let that hold you back, you know? Yeah. You'll get to be the best. Cool, thank you very much. Pleasure, mate. And Yeah, feel free to go to Facebook, Twitter, or Google, and it's just Banachek, or you can always email at Banachek at Banachek.com.